Okay, cool, we're live again. Wait. I gotta start drawing something specific. <laughs> I think I'll do like seahorses maybe. Seahorses are fucking crazy. Have you ever seen one give birth? I saw a video, it's like a cloud of babies, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's like, it looks like millions of them and they're like the size of a dot or something. Yeah. And it's like, also like the male gives birth to, like there's like... Oh, right, yeah. Like it's such a... It's just crazy. Draw, draw. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Could do like I don't know. I'm trying to think of some animal. Did you see the trailer for the? For killers of the flower moon oh no not yet but i i heard like martin scorsese is a new thing yeah she looks bomb it looks so good what is like what's the concept for it uh it's like i think it's about like a real life event something about like a series of murders. Um, I don't even really know what time it takes place, but like, I think someone's murdering indigenous people. I don't, I don't know for certain, but yeah, really, some tribe is involved. Somehow. Is is uh Leonardo Somewhere. DiCaprio in it? Yeah. Leonardo DiCaprio and uh, Robbie, old Robbie D. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Robert De Niro. Seems like he's been in more stuff lately. Yeah. Same with uh, like Joe Pesci was like retired it seemed like for years and then he did the irishman and now he's like in that pete davidson show oh uh, is he yeah it's seems weird that he'd be in that Dude, i don't i don't i don't get pete davidson <laughs> yeah i don't understand how he's a thing yeah i don't me either like it's weird, it just seems like, like, people, like, it seems, he seems like the type of guy that, like, executives have, like, put all their money into him, like, oh, this is the next big guy, like, 
this is like Andy Sandberg for Zoomers or something. And like, I just, I feel like I haven't seen, I just, I, I don't see anything positive about him like anywhere. Like, I don't get why he has all these like autobiographical movies and shows being made about him. Yeah. And it's like, I don't, from what I understand, it's not like nepotism. Like the guy doesn't come from money, I don't think, or anything like that. It's like, yeah. How did this guy? I just don't get it. Like, <laughs> yeah. no offense, but like, <laughs> just he's like, is he like a CIA asset or something? Like, I don't know what's going <laughs> yeah. on. Yeah, I know. Yeah, just like some, there's something kind of suspicious about all of this, and I can't put my finger on it. Yeah. Like especially, so especially how he became like a, like, just like him getting married to like Ariana Grande and then dating like Kim Kardashian. It's like, it's like I d I don't understand it. I don't know. Yeah. It's a mystery. Yeah. <laughs> And then, but it's just, it's funny because, like, yeah, I don't understand it, like, his appeal, but then at the same time, like, there's, like, stories that come out where it's, like, Pete Davidson throws a fit on set, like, throws a chair through his trailer window or something, like, it's oh, just, really? like, yeah, like, I don't know if he threw something through a window, but he, d I remember there's, like, a story that came out where, like, he had like some fit like on the filming of this new show. So it's just a lot of weird stuff. But it seems like there's a lot of uh comedian movies being made. Yeah, like, um, speaking of Robbie D, I saw a trailer of him in, like, some sort of comedy with Sebastian Maniscalco. Yeah. Like, based on his life or something. Yeah, there's that, and then there's that guy, uh, Burt Kreischer, and he has, like, a movie coming out, which looks awful. I don't, I don't get <laughs> that guy either. I, I yeah, don't understand I, that guy, like... Yeah, me either. I don't like, know. Like, because, like, over time, because, like, years ago, I, I listened to Joe Rogan's podcast a lot, like, back mm -hmm. in, like, 2013, like, 2015, like, that period. And, like, yeah, back when it was just, like, weirdo guests and, like, yeah, yeah, like, and the conversations and stuff. Yeah, and there's, like, a lot more, like, just kind of like stupid top like like it, it just felt more like he was just hanging out with friends and stuff like that and they'd talk about like funny shit and like yeah. whenever i heard him on like back in the day like he never he, j he just seemed like a a guy like he just seemed fine you know but like over yeah, he was uh he was the fear factor guy yeah he had a podcast yeah, but, like, but even, like, Burt Kreischer or something, and maybe I just, like, wasn't, I just wasn't even thinking, you know, just, like, like, uh, oh, you know, like, he's fine, but, like, Burt Kreischer, like, he's really, like, not, like, a funny guy, like, his comedy isn't yeah. good, you know, like, yeah, like, I feel like he's, like, personable, sometimes like when he's on podcasts but like when you like look into the stuff that he's making it's like really bad stuff like it's just i don't know but that's it's just not talented <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah like because it, it's it's a little shocking because you see it and you're like wait so his whole thing is that he like takes his shirt off like like that's and like the like main talks about his alcoholism or something. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. 
Yeah, it's just like... It just seems like really bottom of the barrel type of stuff. Yeah. But yeah, it's it's interesting because just out of nowhere there's like all these comedian like movies and shows and it has the same like like there's some there's like similarities with like these comedians always cast like a famous actor as their dad, you know? Yeah. Which is just kind of funny, like, I don't know, like, I just imagine them getting hyped up on that, you know, but it's just kind of like, yeah. it always just seems like a weird auto-bio type of thing, you know? Yeah. Oh my god, like this truck. <laughs> Kinda looked like JK Simmons. <laughs> I was trying to draw it fucking um <clears throat> what's his name again? Yo, what the fuck? Why am I blinking on his name? Brute. Gr oh Vin Diesel. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, Vin Diesel. <laughs> yeah. Me and Clarice have been talking about Vin Diesel a lot. <laughs> really? Yeah, just like she was sending me a bunch of photo, like random photos of him, and like he's just like one of those guys that's like funny for some reason. Have you heard anything about uh, Guardians of the Galaxy? Nah, I mean I was gonna watch it once it comes out on Disney Plus. Yeah, but I haven't really. Or I don't know. Yeah, I haven't been. Have like... you? No, I haven't seen it. But I, uh... yeah, I don't even know what's going on really with superhero stuff right now yeah just seems like after the big finale with like the infinity war stuff like it just lost a lot of steam yeah and it's just like I mean, everyone complains about it. They yeah. come about as trite as the movies themselves, but you know, it's just the same shit over and over again. Yeah. But I mean, they had a good run, you know? I mean, like, basically yeah, dominating a decade in terms of, like, the prominence of the genre, you know? Like, you can't yeah. really. I feel like everything like you gotta it's... respect it on some level, you know. Yeah. Cause it's weird because it's nuts like when you look at when you think about how Avengers and like I mean really like even like Iron Man that came out in like two thousand eight. Mm -hmm. And it's like just up till now it's like just kept growing and growing like expon exponentially so it's just like 
when you do your big final thing, like, you're kind of gonna lose a ton of steam naturally. Yeah. <laughs> I'm about to give birth. <laughs> birth. Did you ever play uh, Resident Evil 4? Nah. Oh yeah. That was like the first one that was like 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 3D, right? Or not 3D? Yeah. I don't know what that's like. But yeah, like just the... kind of like first person or something. Yeah, yeah, like popularized third person view stuff. I think. Yeah. But. Yeah, that's one of those, like, that's, that was one of my, like, favorite games when I was younger, and I, like, played it again recently, and it's, like, so good, you know, like, it holds up. yeah, like, when you go back to something you played, like, a long time ago, or watched a long time ago, and you have, like, a deeper appreciation of it. Yeah. Because it's just, like, the pacing of it is... Cause, and that's, like, the thing about games that I usually have an issue with is, like... Especially with, like, newer games, like... It just feels like they become so colossal in size because, like, it's, like, open world and, like... Like, if you want to get the most out of the game, you gotta collect all this shit or, like... Or the story is, like really expansive so it like takes forever and like yeah the thing i like about resident evil 4 is like it has like a pretty simple story but like it like they give you like just enough of everything to like keep it like really tight and well paced so it's like it like keeps you drawn in and it like which is, like, something I have trouble with, because it's rare that I complete, like, a whole video game. Mm -mm. Did you hear about the, um, fucking... The... Uh, what is it called? Metal Gear Solid Snake Eater remake? Oh, yeah, I just saw that today. I'm so... You're that. like a huge fan of those games, right? I've always wanted to play them, but I just yeah, never it... had the chance. Yeah, I, I uh, yeah, I like used to because my dad would play Metal Gear Solid when I was like really young, and I mm -hmm. got into it through that. And but I I never like because I was super young when I was introduced to it. Like I never like played the games like a ton you know 
but like I was like a big fan of like Snake and everything like that. But mm -hmm. I I think it was like around 2017 or 18 like I just wanted to play Metal Gear Solid 2 because I just something about like the atmosphere of it I really like and it like reminds me of a lot of that time period just because I remember when it came out and mm -hmm. so I decided to play it and then like it like blew my mind because I like I didn't know the way it ended but it has like this super meta ending and like oh shit yeah it, like hits you out of nowhere and it's like really it's like pertains to like how like crazy media stuff is nowadays you know so it like mm -hmm. felt really ahead of its time uh just in terms of like subject matter and stuff like that so like playing that like i kind of just got sucked into metal gear solid stuff like i played like the other games and really enjoyed all of them it was on the ps2 right yeah the first one came out well there's like a lot of game like it started out like as a like a i don't know if it's yeah i don't know what it like some like nintendo thing or something like in the 90s and then oh, they shit. and then like the big one that came out was metal gear solid which is on ps1 <clears throat> and then like metal gear solid 2 and 3 were on ps2 but but snake eater is like that's like considered one of the best ones of the series so i'll have to cool. find that old ps2 copy at some retro game store or something and play it yeah yeah there's also a like they did a remaster for it which it or like not like a remake or anything it's just like they released it on like ps3 and stuff like that mm. but uh so it ha still has like the classic graphics but they might have it on like you might even be able to get it on like ps4 or like xbox one or whatever if you wanted to play it and all i have is my old ps2 <laughs> oh yeah then <laughs> i mean lies ps2 is a good way to go to yeah but it's funny because uh with metal gear solid 3 like like a lot of people are like not fans of konami and everything because they've kind of like there's like oh they fucked over uh what's his name right hideo kojima yeah yeah so there's like like people are already not like fans of konami but uh mm -hmm. i think it, either konami or like another company like they made a pachinko machine of metal gear solid 3 which is like a just a gambling machine type of uh -huh. thing and like they like remastered everything so you're like playing you're like gambling but it like has like cutscenes and stuff thrown into of like mm -hmm. the game and you're like playing through the game but like through gambling or something like that but it's like super <laughs> like well done like high definition like remakes of like all the scenes and stuff and like uh -huh. it just like a lot of people thought it was like a slap in the face because like konami like basically stopped focusing on making like good games and stuff and they focused more on like like easy money like you know like pachinko machines or like mobile games and stuff like that and they kind of left hideo kojima out to dry and stuff so like mm. just seeing like this this gambling machine but it has like this like amazing looking remake of metal gear solid 3 like was like pe had people pissed off but like now that they're making it that's gonna be really cool yeah 
wanna I wanna play them. I wanna see what it's all about. You I remember you showed me like some uh video essay series on Metal Gear that I've been trying uh, to find again. Cause I never it... finished it, but Yeah, I, uh it might be it just has like a very funny like tone of voice and like Yeah, I think I think it was uh it, it's like a four hour video of yeah. a guy that's like that's like a big like metal gear fan but he's talking about how the fourth metal gear solid game was like a mistake or something yeah yeah i think if you just look up metal gear solid 4 was a mistake then you can find um, it okay that's what it was yeah I don't... that's just like one of those videos i come back to every so often because it's like it's like such a I mean, it's just, like, something about a guy that made, like, a four-hour video, like, going deep on, like, the themes of, like, a video game or something. It's, like, it's, like, a special type of content or whatever. Yeah, I, I think about that video sometimes, I'm, like, I don't know, when I'm working, I'm, like, oh, I kind of want to listen to that while I work for some reason. Yeah. It was uh, funny because that guy also likes Xavier Renegade Angel, apparently. Mm. And he, like, in the, the Metal Gear Solid video, he edits, like, the... Because he's kind of, like, poking fun at, like, the dialogue and stuff. Or, like, between, mm -hmm. like, Snake and this other character, Raiden. And it, like, it sounds kind of similar to, like, something that you'd hear from Xavier. Like, just kind of, like, these hollow like one-liner type lines that like sound good in a movie so he like <laughs> edit he like edited it to like be like it's like they're saying lines from xavier but he like edited it well where like he took out certain parts of like the footage so it would match the words that are being said in the xavier clips so it's mm -hmm. like just really funny yeah, I remember it was, like, super informative, too. Like, he had all this, like, behind-the-scenes info about, like, like the writer of... Or one of the screenwriters for Metal Gear or whatever thought that Kojima was, like, a shit writer or something. Yeah. Or, like, yeah. a whole section of it that was just, like, really entertaining, like... Yeah. No, yeah, I'm, like... Scenes. Yeah, I'm super fascinated by that type of stuff. Because, yeah, like... Hideo, like, I... I'm just always, like, intrigued by, like, Hideo Kojima stuff. Because there's, like... Because they're not perfect, like, storytelling-wise. Like, there's, like, a lot of issues, I feel like, with, like he could cut out a lot of stuff to like make it his stuff more stronger because like sometimes there's just like like a ton of dialogue and it can get like it can wear on you type of thing but mm -hmm. like at the same time like i'm like super drawn into his stuff like more so than a lot of other media out there so it's just interesting yeah. because it's like I feel like it's far from perfect, but I'm, like, way more invested in, like, the types of stories that he's trying to tell, like, compared to compared to other stuff I see. Right. So I it's... mean, by all accounts, the stuff he's made and his team's made are, like, masterpieces. No, yeah, so. definitely. And, like, yeah, that's that's the thing. It's, like, it's, like complicated you know like you can't just yeah. like say like oh like his games suck because like they just don't you know like even as games they're just like super well made but yeah. like the like the way it's the execution of like the writing and stuff isn't perfect but even then like the scenarios and the characters are intriguing and draw you in so like you're able to forgive a lot of stuff about it. Yeah.
but like when I was like a tiny kid, I got like a like a snake action figure, and I was like obsessed with that. <laughs> <laughs> like I would run around pretending that I'm snake and shit. Sick. <laughs> Oh, we got somebody in the chat. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Hello, Bucky ABX, if you're still there. Fuck, <laughs> uh -huh. oh, dude, I wish I knew how to paint. Yeah. Oh, that's cool, though. I'm just like, I've been like completely mindlessly drawing like this whole time. Oh yeah, me too. I just started picking like, I don't know, like movie scenes I found. It's that one website. What's the website? Uh, like, um, limb.ai. It's called lim.ai. Lim, F-L-I-M dot A-I. You can just, like, find... Find shit, like, from any movie, basically. Yeah, Pretty yeah. cool. Yeah, let me look that up. Damn, that's a that's a good resource. Yeah. Cause yeah, like whenever I wanna do like a film study or something like that, it's I, I you just you kinda get like I mean at least me I get hung up on like what do I pick? Like like I don't even yeah. know what I'm supposed to pick, you know, like Yeah. That's probably a good, like, way to start learning how to paint, you know? Like, yeah. <laughs> like, because, like, just having something with, like, specific strong lighting is probably a good starting point, you know? For sure. I'm done. I'm off it. Fuck this. <laughs> Fuck the pain. The good thing about like learning something like painting is there's probably like a ton of like good resources on like YouTube and stuff like that. Because, like, yeah. I've seen a lot of, like, 
YouTube shorts and stuff from painters where they give a breakdown on a certain technique or something and it seems like a really helpful like intro to certain things for real yeah like look into that yeah like and like and then their channel like they have like more in-depth videos but like stuff like that where it's like super concise like really concisely uh describing like a technique and like something that's like a tiktok or something is like a really yeah. good way to just get like a like a, just an intro starting point of like knowledge for something yeah. because because uh there's like a guy there's this animator named alex grigg who started doing that with like animation like he makes like videos on like and like how to animate and like the animation principles and stuff but he's like the he's like a like an independent animator type of guy so he has like a unique visual style and stuff but he's like made youtube shorts that like really like effectively describe like squash and stretch and like drag and overlap and stuff like that like and it, i was just impressed because like it's it's rare to like come across something where they're able to like put that type of stuff really simply sure what, what's his name alex grigg g-r-i-g-g -I, -G, I think Oh shit, okay. I'll have to check it out. Yes. Cause I've known about him for a long time, but he started like just recently doing these like animation tutorials. And they're really good. I feel like it's like also like his stuff just looks really cool, so I feel like hearing it from a guy like that is helpful because you can kind of see like if you're into his stuff you can kind of see an end point to your for yourself type of thing because sometimes like if it's like a like one of the nine old men is like teaching you the principles of animation it almost feels like this far away thing that you can't attain or something but like if it's more like coming from a guy that is doing stuff that you're that you have I similar ideas for type of thing it's just like easier to process it for some reason yeah Oh, that's sick, bro. <laughs> Thanks. Have you ever tried using Blender before? Nah. Kinda wanted though. Yeah, I just downloaded it. Like, I gotta look up some stuff on how to use it though. 
3D is like, I've been like for like the past little while, I've been like wanting to learn more about it, but I feel like it's easy to put it off a lot because there's just a ton of new stuff you have to learn about when dealing with 3D stuff. Hmm. But yeah. Just gotta people look. people just use like the 2D stuff too, right? In Blender? But, yeah. Yeah, I think they have like it seems like they have a lot of different features. But yeah, it'd be cool to try to use for 2D. I think I'm gonna head out now. I gotta eat something. Yeah, it sounds good. We had a good, good sesh. Yeah. I'll we'll hang out again next week. Yeah, next week. You wanna do Thursday again? Or, yeah, yeah. Or no, actually. Or actually, I'll just I'll let you know again because I'm it, I might have to pick Clarice up on Thursday, but. Oh shit! Okay. Yeah. No worries.